Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're going to be taking a first look at a brand new game which is coming out today called Command Modern Operations. And this is a uh, sequel to the uh, classic war game Command Modern Air Naval Operations. So similar names, uh, but uh, Command Modern Operations is in fact a sequel to the previous one. This is developed by Warfare Sims, it's published by Slytherin and Matrix Games, and it is one of the most detailed war games of all time. Uh, this is, I would say, more than a traditional sequel in, in a sense. It is a new platform might be the better way to think of it. So like when you think about upgrading Microsoft Office or you think about upgrading uh, Adobe Suite from three to four or to, to uh, on you know to the, the cloud version, uh, that's really what this is. And the reason that's worth a distinction is typically when you think of a sequel of a game, you don't think of the ability to play everything that you played with the previous version plus the new capabilities. Command Modern Operations supports Command Modern Air Naval Operations scenarios. So all the DLC, the Desert Storm DLC, the Chains of War DLC, the Northern uh, uh, Inferno DLC, all of the Command Live scenario packs, all of that is supported in Command Operations. So it's more like when the PlayStation 2 came out and you could play all your PlayStation 1 games on the PlayStation 2 because it had backwards compatibility. Command on Modern Operations has backwards compatibility. It's a tremendous feature. If you already own Command, it is a great feature. If you don't own Command, it's a great feature because it gives you access to literally hundreds upon hundreds of user scenarios uh, in the game. And so I highly recommend uh, just looking into all the different scenarios and looking at, at what's up there because I, I just want to give major props to Warfare Sims for the fact that they have backwards compatibility from the sequel of their original game. So that's the one thing. The other thing is this game introduces some new mechanics. Uh, the biggest and probably most popular one is going to be the 3D, the, the 3D uh, integration with TacView. So if you're unfamiliar, TacView is a 3D uh, platform that allows you to sort of watch like air combat battles in games like DCS or IL-2 or other games like that, where you can actually get a 3D output of uh, outside your cockpit and see everything going on in the world. Well, Command Modern Operations supports TacView, does require you purchase TacView Advanced, but if you don't own TacView Advanced, you can get, a, I think, a 21-day free trial for TacView. So if you do get Command Modern Operations, check out uh, TacView. You get it for almost a month for free, and you can figure out if it's worth your purchase. It's, it's, a, it's not an inexpensive program. It's almost $80, uh, but you don't need it in any way to play this game. It just supports it. Just like DCS, just like IL-2, those games support integration with TacView. So does Command, except the only difference is those games are 3D flight simulators. Command is not a 3D flight simulator. Command is a uh, 2D uh, war game uh, in the harpoon model or in, you know, if you think of like an operations map that you might see at the Pentagon where they see the little dots move around on the map and the missiles show up and they kind of cruise across the map. You've probably seen those things in videos or movies or things like that. Uh, not a super 3D rendered world, but that kind of a 2D operational map, that command center map, that NORAD type map uh, is really the, the heart and core of what Command Modern Operations is and has, and that will support 3D via TAC view. So that's something worth calling out. Um, and in general, there's just a lot of enhancements to the game. So they made some enhancements to the way that the flight models work. It's no longer just like a systematic view of, oh, it's systems fighting systems. No, people are a thing that I think are better modeled in this game. They have things like G-forces and other things like that, which really weren't a part of the previous game that uh, add more layers to aerial combat. And so there's a lot of different capabilities and features. They've completely overhauled air combat. They've added a lot of detail to land combat, but I don't want to bore you, bore you or talk your ear off with this for five plus minutes. So just to suffice to say, this is a sequel, has a lot of new capabilities, a lot of new features. And if you already own Command Modern Operations, you get a 50% discount until, I think, January 31st of 2020. Uh, if you bought it through Matrix, you can get your 50% discount there. I think if you bought it through Steam, you get a 50% discount as well. Uh, so if you're a previous owner of Command Modern Air Naval Operations, uh, you get a steep discount on Command Modern Operations uh, to upgrade to it. Uh, and presumably, because this has backwards compatibility, I'm assuming they're not going to support the old version of the game anymore because it's kind of being replaced. With that being said, I did do a live stream of this the other night. 
uh, which was literally my first look at this game. It is very complex. It's a difficult difficult game to learn. Um, so I just want to say I did two things last night. I did a quick battle, which is a new feature that allows you to just jump right into battles and create a really simple battle. So I did that, and that was, I think, a lot of fun, and I could show you some of the mechanics. This is an incredibly deep game. I can't even begin to scrape the surface of something like this in a 30-minute video. So we're going to look at the air combat phase, and we may look a little bit at the scenario that I played uh, as well, which is a more complex scenario, but I just kind of dinked around with it. So let's go ahead and uh, jump in here uh, to the live stream, and I'll pick it up at the end, guys. Um, jumping quick in here. So there is a new quick battle feature. Uh, it is pretty basic. It allows you to either set up an air-to-surface anti-submarine uh, warfare uh, engagement, a simple air-to-air -air engagement, a submarine 1v1 duel, or a surface 1v1 engagement. We're going to jump in and we're going to do the simple air-to-air -air engagement because that's simple. I'm not going to do the F-22 because that feels a little bit too cheap. So, like, there's, there's some pre-built pre uh, scenarios here. Uh, not scenarios, but, but unit packs here. So, uh, for example, the first column here is what are you in command of in this game? You're in command of six. Uh, what do you want to be in command of? Do you want to be commanding Su-27 Fox or Firefox? Is that the pack FA, by the way? Uh, the Su-35 S Flanker E, the MiG-29 M2 Fulcrum, uh, the F-16CM Bulk 50, a 2016 variant, or the F-15C Eagle to, of 2010, or the F-22 Raptor. We're going to go with the Viper, we're going to go with the Falcon, uh, and we're going to have six of those. We're going to be squaring off against not a Su-57, because I don't think that's going to be a fair fight, uh, but we'll go up against uh, MiG-29s of the uh, Syrian Air Force. I'm guessing that's what SYAF stands for. Uh, so we'll go up against Syrian f uh, MiG-29s. Probably not a super fair fight. I'm guessing the Syrian Air Force isn't as well trained as the Russian Air Force, but I think the Su-35 would two outclass our F-16s. Uh, so it's going to be U.S. Air Force and F-16s against MiG-29s and Fulcrum Cs. Um, you can see here you have rules of engagement you can set up, so weapons tight, hold, free. We're just going to go with free. Weapons free. Uh, enemies ecom status is going to start with the radar active. We could turn it off. That would make it harder to find them. Uh, local time, I don't really care. Six o'clock. Uh, weather, we'll just say clear, but you get a lot of different options there. We could try and fly in a mon monsoon, um, but I... Nah, nah. <laughs> anyway, so we'll go ahead and jump in here. What? Did I actually lose an aircraft, or was that the end of my last scenario where I was kind of dinking around with this? Looks like that was the end of my last scenario. So first things first, let's go ahead and pause here. I'm actually going to group my aircraft. It looks like they're already kind of grouped with like, a, I'm guessing this is a commander, blue one, and then he's got a wing of fighters out front. We're going to group these into two groups of three. So we're going to go ahead and set these guys. All we have to do is kind of drag and highlight these three guys. Just hit the G button, and it'll actually group them up as a, as a single group. Um, I can't... I don't know if I can just do the same thing by holding shift. Yeah, so if I hold shift, select the units, go ahead and hit G, then I link them up as one unit. So now I have two wings of three fighter aircraft, flight 13, which has three F-16s, and we've got flight 14 here with three F-16s. These guys are all kind of grouped together in a line. These guys are a little bit spread out with two up front and one in the back. One of the other big enhancements with this game is the terrain uh, looks a lot prettier. It does take a little bit of time to load, but in general, uh, the map and the terrain are just gorgeous. You can load a high resolution. We're flying over the ocean, so it's not quite as, as relevant. Uh, but you can add some high resolution textures and other things like that to get much more of a Google Earth uh, kind of a kind of a view than what you could have in the previous command. So, like as you zoom toward the toward the ground, you know things can get more detailed and look very much like a Google Maps world. In addition to that, it does support right-click and drag. So instead of right-clicking and just sort of snapping your view over there, I can just click on a spot, drag the mouse around, and that's pretty darn cool. So that's definitely an enhancement over uh, what existed previously. Uh, you can see there's obviously a completely new user interface as well uh, that brings things like engaging targets, plotting course, throttle and altitude, formation editors, uh, and uh, all the way over to unit group doctrine and mission editor. All of that stuff is presented right in front of you in a very clear sort of a way. The mission log, which used to kind of clutter up and take up a lot of space, is actually collapsible now. So we can kind of go through here and see that there's bogeys and other things that are going on right now in our mission log. But if we want, we can just collapse that. Additionally, there's a really easy way to just kind of drag and drop and speed things up or slow things down up here on the top left. And on the bottom left, there's an ability to advance, just sort of a click in advance time by 15 seconds, a minute, 5 minutes, 15 minutes, which in longer scenarios can be really useful if you're just trying to jump ahead uh, without trying to run things, you know, too real-timey. All right. 
Um, yeah, what's the Syrian Air Force doing in the North Sea? I don't know, but it's a quick battle. It's a random battle here. So as you can see here, Flight 14, we have a good uh, armament over here on the right side. We've got 12 AM-120 AMRAMs. We've got 6 AM-9 AM-9X Sidewinder, so the newest version of the Sidewinder. Uh, we've got cannons, chaff, flares, and I'm assuming these are weapons targeting pods. Uh, so that's that's pretty cool. Uh, the other cool thing is, I mentioned Google Earth. You can literally zoom out with this game, and it's a full-blown Earth. It's all one map. So like. I just wanted to go and zoom in and on Chicago, I could do that. Now, it might take a few moments to actually load up the terrain from over here in Chicago uh, because, well, it's not, uh, you know, I just went halfway across the world. So it does take a few moments sometime to load things up here. But, uh, you know, we could we could theoretically zoom down and, and maybe even, uh, even with maybe a higher texture resolution mod or, or something like that. You know, oh wow, even, I could even kind of zoom down and try and find where I live. We're not going to do that right now because that would be weird. But again, just look at the, the detail on this. This is this is pretty cool. It's definitely a big step up. And I don't even have uh, the actual like high resolutions on, do I? I've got the Sentinel-2 satellite map, BMG layer. Um, so you've got kind of different view options over here. So Chicago, there it is for you. Definitely uh, there's Navy Pier. Anyway, uh, we'll zoom back out. And we'll scroll over. I should nuke Chicago. Maybe I'd go uh, go offline. Um, bombed a mother-in-law's house. Mother-in-law does not live in Chicago, but yeah, you know. Anyway, so let's get back into this fight. Uh, this one, we're just looking at the enemy. It looks like they're coming in in pairs. Um, or maybe not. They're coming in a little bit more disorganized. You can see our radar contact with all these guys. One second, six seconds ago. See what the lag kind of is. We can see the cones here from where the radar's coming in. Presumably they've got uh, got a contact on us. I'm going to choose the lead flight of 13. I'm going to go ahead and uh, unpause the game. I'm going to go ahead and have them auto-target uh, this lead enemy bogey. By the fact that I'm targeting them, it switches it immediately to a hostile. And then I'm also going to go ahead and I'm going to auto-target this other guy over here. And so we've got two of our groups are each engaging one enemy bogey. Now the big daddy, the big thing that a lot of people are excited about is the tack view. So we'll go ahead and pull that up. Uh, you can, I think this is one of those things that's going to be really useful for dual monitors. So I'd like to drag it out over here and put it in full screen on my second monitor, but the way my streaming is set up right now, I can't really do that. Um, so I'm just going to drag it back over here. I've already issued kind of my initial orders for my, my aircraft. You can see over here, this is the global TAC view map. We can zoom in here and we can see the unit that we currently are selected on is this F-16C, blue number one. You can see it's kind of uh, banking in. You use your right mouse click to kind of uh, drag yourself around the TAC view map. Um, this is a separate purchase, so this is not, uh, strictly speaking, part of the game, but the support is a new capability for the game. So you do have to buy TAC view separately. You have to buy TAC view advanced, I believe it is. Although I think you get a free 21-day trial with TacView, so if you do get the game and you want to try it out and see how valuable it is to you, that's definitely something you can do. Additionally, the one callout that I've seen everybody mention, and kind of does matter on other scenarios, is that TacView is God's eye, God's eye view. So you will see literally everything uh, that's on the map when you're in TacView. So in some scenarios where you know it's a, it's a closely scripted scenario and you're trying to kind of maintain some of that sense of fog of war, you know, that might be viewed as a negative thing. Uh, but it is what it is. It's really simple, too, by the way. You just target to wherever the executive executable file is for TacView, and it instantly knows, uh, you know, what to, what to display here. So you can you can kind of zoom in, or you can have a kind of a window on the side, or you can set it up in a, in a second monitor here. All right, so our two flights here are moving in, 650 knots for each flight. Uh, one's coming in a little bit ahead of the other. We zoom in here, we can kind of see where the actual aircraft are. Um, you can see the enemy aircraft. Uh, our own sensors are off right now, so we don't have a perfect view of the enemy. I think what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go ahead and order their sensors on. So this is going to be like an active sonar ping, which is going to give away our position. We're going to dis, uh, we're going to give up on obeying our ecom rules. We're going to go ahead and use radar to light up the light up the skies. And just like that, we've got a visual on an enemy bogey. We'll go ahead and or with radar, so they're much closer in. And we'll go ahead and order these guys to engage. Um, so if we go ahead and we are engaging, dogfights are occurring, or is occurring. You can see the AMRAMs have been fired, and they're climbing up toward the enemy MiG-29s. Uh, we'll see uh, how they end up doing. Let's go ahead and... Can I double-click on any of these missiles? 
I can. So I can double click on the missile to see where it's tracking. You can see it's coming in. It looks like it probably overshot the MiGs. This one's turning in. That over. Oh, no, we got a little hit there. That yellow, or at least it represents an explosion. So we've got an enemy MiG in the back. Our own Vipers are maneuvering. And you kind of got the contrail or the track. You can see the history of where these aircraft are with these little uh, squiggly lines all over. They're firing a second volley of uh, AMRAMs. So we'll go ahead and zoom in there. And we'll see if they can engage. You can see the MiGs are, are diving, presumably to try and get out of the way. All right, we might have hit one there. A couple of explosions there. If I go ahead and zoom out here, we can see, uh, if we go to the message log, what we're seeing here. Bogey's vanishing. So some misses. Yeah, I don't see anything indicating kills. Let's uh, collapse that. We've still got our radar on, though. So we may have actually... Have we destroyed them all? No, there's still, there's still at least two enemy MiGs in here. Again, because we've got the God, uh, God's Eye view. There's three enemy MiGs, so it looks like we have shot down a few. Whoops. So there's two MiGs here, red two and three, and then we've got red one over here, the commander of the group. Cruising along here. They haven't actually gotten any shots off against us, I don't think, yet. So go ahead and zoom that. We're going to go ahead, and it looks like we haven't actually issued orders to engage these guys. Maybe we don't know if they're hostile or not. So we are engaging, we're going ahead and we're firing more AMRAMs. This is a pretty simple fight for what it's worth. Um, so we're going to engage these two remaining enemy aircraft. Looks like two AMRAMs are out. I don't have the best angle on them. You can see coming in here kind of on the side of the aircraft. Alright, we got that one. Red 2 is gone, Red 3 is maneuvering. There's that AMRAM coming in. Oops, sorry, clicking and freezing. Amram was able to turn to try and match the, the MiG, but the MiG did avoid it by the looks of it. So our aircraft are just going to continue firing and engaging until they've destroyed the enemy target. I'm going to go ahead and auto-engage the last remaining bogey, which, I'm again, I'm kind of surprised. I don't know if the MiGs don't have weaponry to uh, engage our F-16s if they don't see them. I'm not quite sure. I guess they are Syrian Air Force, so maybe they're not as well-trained. The Viper? I'm pretty sure the Viper is not... It's not based off the fact that it's a V or a C. I don't even think there is an F-16V. The Viper is just the nickname for the, uh, for the F-16, man. The F-16 was developed around the time the first Battlestar Galactica came out, too. So I don't know if that's in any way related. But it does kind of look like the Viper. You can see, actually, uh, this F-16 is diving down. Looks like he's going to dive down and try and engage the enemy. Maybe a little bit more closer. Maybe switch it to guns. Doesn't anybody have any missiles left? Yeah, I mean, TacView is 70 bucks. It's not It's not free. Um, it's not cheap. But uh, I think a lot of people who are really into flight sims find a lot of value in it. I think it's a really strong and impressive perform program. And it really does add a lot to the command experience to be able to see what's actually occurring. But it's not for everybody, and you don't necessarily need to get it. All right, so that Sidewinder destroyed the enemy. And so I think that's it. Now, these quick battles don't seem to have, like, a victory trigger, so we've destroyed all the enemy. But there's nothing to say, like, oh, it's over, even though it is. Um, so that's the end of that battle. We'll go ahead and close the tack view window here. You can see our fighters are still kind of sweeping around, and we're just going to jump back to the main menu. So that was a really, really 30-second quick look of, uh, the, um, of the quick battle feature in Command Modern Operations. And what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and we're going to jump into a little bit more complex scenario. And I'm not good at this game. I don't know all the ins and outs. I don't know. They, and they, frankly, they changed a lot. I remember I was uh, chatting with another uh, content. Content? I hate using that word. I was chatting with another... Uh, well, he's actually a games journalist on uh, on Twitter, and he was like, he got the manual. They sent like a notice out that was like, here's everything we changed, and he was like, oh my god, like this is they changed a ton. 
uh, and a ton of enhancements. And, and, you know, he was kind of overwhelmed by how much he was going to have to relearn. But, um, you know, he thought uh, he, I, he's very excited. And he was uh, we were kind of chatting earlier. I think he's he's really going to have a blast with this. But um, it was just kind of interesting that there, there's a lot that's changed. And I'm not even good at the original ones, so I'm not going to be good at this. But what we're going to do is we're going to play Iron Hand. Uh, it's a scenario that takes place in 2014. Uh, the concept is made by Mike Mikitin. This was one of the scenarios that shipped with the original game. Now I will show you again, as I said earlier, this game does support all of the DLC and everything else like that uh, that comes with the uh, Command Modern Air Naval Operations. This is basically, I would think of Command Operations less as a complete sequel and more of a new engine replacement. So if you think about like Adobe, right? Adobe used to release Creative Suite software and there'd be Creative Suite 1 for Photoshop and Creative Suite 2 and Creative Suite 3 and Creative Suite 4. And as they rolled out new Creative Suites, they came with new capabilities, new features. And you didn't go back and buy Creative Suite 2 when Creative Suite 4 was out because 4 in every way superseded 2. It's not its own, 2 is not, not its own standalone thing. It's superseded, it's no longer relevant. There's not much reason to go out and buy it when there's a better option. And in fact, um, you know, I think they stopped selling Creative Suites after the new ones came out. Um, and so Command in many ways, I think is the same sort of a concept. It carries over all these masses of scenarios that people have built and that they've really uh, kind of uh, spent a lot of time on, you know, the DLC for Desert Storm, for Chains of War, etc. the standalones from the original release. Um, and in every way, it supersedes the previous version of Command. And so that's uh, kind of an interesting thing to, to, to be able to see. In any event, Iron Hand is going to be um, a scenario that takes place on May 27th, 2014. And duration is three days. We are going to be playing as Russia. Uh, so similar to our Rule the Waves Russia series, we're going to be taking on the mantle of the bear. Uh, this is the no Na Nagronono. Uh, Karbaka. I can't pronounce any of these words. Um, I'm clearly not Slavic. Uh, <laughs> and uh, whatever the name of that thing is, Enclave remains one of the most contested pieces of real estate in what was once the Soviet Union. The conflict started in 1988 and escalated when the Enclave declared its independence from Azerbaijan in 1992. Based on the desires of the ethnic Armenian population to gain autonomy from Greater Azerbaijan, Armenia naturally sided with her ethnic brothers and contributed to a bloody conflict that ended with a Russian brokered ceasefire in 1994. Tensions since have continued to rise and fall, driving a regional arms race, the occasional skirmishes putting Russia in a position where it once again may have to intervene. Um, and so that's the sort of the, the plot behind this. This isn't a historical battle that occurred in 2014. This is very much a hypothetical. Okay, that's good to know, Kushin. So these scenarios were rebuilt um, and some were slightly reimagined. So that's good to know. Okay, so we're going to zoom in here. We're going to see our forces in Armenia are over here, this little strip of territory. Meanwhile, Azerbaijan is right here. This is where we're going to be bombing. We'll wait for the targets to load. Our Utikush air, air base is over in this direction. I think our TEL missile batteries are actually up here, the 129th uh, missile battery base. Uh, our surface action group is right here, the Dagestan super surf, or surface action group. And then we have additional airfields up here. I think our Su-27s are based out of here, and Engels Air Force Base is up here. So you can see quite a large geographical area is covered in this battle, uh, and uh, all the way into well into Russia, north of, of, of Stalingrad even. Uh, okay, so... Are any of the enemy things showing up yet? None of the targets have loaded yet. So let's go ahead and, okay, so we'll unpause and then we'll pause again. So the enemy units have loaded, so remember, SA-4, SA-5s, and then SA-20s. Now the SA-20s are probably not going to show up on the map because they just won't. You can see most of the targets here that we can see that we've already identified are SA-3 batteries. Uh, so there's some SA-2s. There's some of the SA-5s. Is the SA-5 mobile? I can't remember if the SA-5 is mobile or not bring up our attack view look here the SA-5s are dangerous the twos are dangerous too man God's eye mode we're gonna ignore what we're looking at wait that's not what I have clicked 
is it? Oh, it even tells us the target. Okay, but that's not, that's literally not what I selected. No, it doesn't look like it's mobile. Good. Okay, so the SA-5s are not mobile. Um, so the SA-5 is the target. SA-4s as well. But this is the one target we've located. Part of me wants to take out their actual land-based radar installations, too. Just, uh... <sighs> okay. So I have bombers that have um, air-to-surface missiles. So if we go up here and we take a look at Engels Air Force Base, we go ahead and we take a look at the, well, not the weapons, we take a look at the um, aircraft here based at the base. So here you can see we've got two um, TU-22 backfires, which have AS-4 air-to-surface uh, cruise missiles uh, in their inventory. We have two blackjacks here with AS-15 Kents in their inventory. Uh, we have two, um, I don't know why it tells you, like, you've got ten of these things. It's like, well, we've only really got two. We've got two uh, T-25 Bears using the KH-101s uh, mainstays with their uh, AWACS capabilities. I don't even know if the AWACS has a lot of value in this scenario just because um, land-based radar kind of covers over there. We've got backfires with which have recon and side-looking radar. Uh, which will help us get maybe a better view of where these mobile enemy sites may be, um, etc. So I think what I'm actually going to do, and maybe this is not the best use of uh, my assets, but, you know, whatever. Uh, I'm going to select the 129th surface-to-surface -surface missile battery. I'm going to go ahead and uh, the game is actually currently paused. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in here and I'm going to try and take out the enemy SA-5 sites because we know they're not mobile. And so, I'm going to go ahead and manually target the SA-5 Gammon. We'll target it with two of our tells. Oh, it's out of range. Never mind. Well, I can't hit that one. I think there is one in range, though. Just so we can get an early win. That's, that's really my goal, is to try and get an early victory over one of the targets that we're supposed to hit. All right, there's the target. So let's go ahead and do a manual target of this. Ah. Why is this not working? Oh, it's because I don't have a, a unit selected to hit it, right? So we'll select the 192nd. Go ahead and manually target. This is our target, the SA-5. Why can't I target it? OODA loop limitation. I don't actually know what that means. Is that some kind of targeting issue? Okay. Um, hmm. What if we man try and manually target with our surface action group? Nothing there. Pixel, I'm not going to click a Wikipedia link while I'm streaming about no idea. O O O D A loop. All right, let's do this. Let's uh, get some aircraft off the ground. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get these TU-22s launch as a group. We'll go ahead and do that. It's gonna take a few moments to get that, get them up in the air. It's gonna take two minutes actually. So they must have been uh, pretty much sitting on the runway and ready to take off if it's only gonna take two minutes to get them uh, getting up. But uh, the TU-22s can get up, and I'm assuming we'll be able to target 
the enemy SA-5s at standoff range with the AS-4. There's a chance it could get shot down, I suppose. But, um... We'll see. Alright, one took off. Alright, I think they're both up. So we've got them up here, this base here, Flight 307. We're going to go ahead and plot their course toward the enemy. We'll do the one... Can we do the one-minute jump? The one-minute jump doesn't seem to work. Do I have to pause for it to work? Like, how does that... Advance time by five minutes. I click it and nothing happens. All right, in any event, while these guys are flying toward their target, let's take a look here at the SA-5 itself. So one of the things with this game that is, is pretty phenomenal is the, the, the equipment database. And so there's literally thousands of pieces of equipment and hardware that the, the game has a write-up on their capabilities, their sensors, all of these other things like this. So, for example, we've selected the SA-5. We've got an overview here that says the SA-5 Gammon, a.k.a. S-200M Vega M missile, is a, is a site, is a static long-range medium to high-altitude air defense using SAR guidance. The SA-5 was designed for the defense of important administration, industrial, and military installations from air attack. A tip typical launch engagement begins with detection of the target by the Tall King C-2D radar and the ODD pair height finding radar. The target is passed to square pair fire control radar, which illuminates the target and, and passes information to the SA-5 missile while still on the launcher. Before launch, an aft-looking antenna on the missile receives the target illumination from the 5N62 square pair radar. This reference signal is then used for the detection. So again, you get a lot of detail here. You get specifications. You can see the OOD cycle, OODA cycle. Detection, 15 seconds. Observe, orient, decide, and act. Reaction time. Targeting takes 60 seconds uh, for a novice crew. Uh, for a ace, it takes 24 seconds. So I'm assuming these are different uh, screw, uh, screw, uh, crew quality levels. Evasion, two seconds. I, I don't know what that means. Uh, missile defense, 16 harpoon slam maverick equivalents. So it's uh, basically the equivalent of uh, a harpoon or surface land attack missile or maverick missile in terms of its ability to defend. Which I imagine is not very much. Um, and you've got different stats here. So I'm guessing each one of these sites has an actual radar facility with it as well. So that's one of the things I always struggle with in this scenario is like there are radar bases all over here. So there's a Tall King radar here. I don't know if that's the only radar or if this target actually has additional radars that feed it. Part of the idea that I've always had with this scenario is like, why don't we take out an enemy radar with our uh, cruise missiles? That's probably easier than taking out the missiles themselves. And maybe that'll actually render the missiles uh, ineffective. But I'm not sure if, if, if this is... Some of the units, like air bases, there's actually multiple things you can target within the air base, and it's not limited to just the one um, enemy, I guess. So I'm going to try... Let's zoom in down here. Let's see. I don't see a radar. I just see the SA-5. Then there's the uh, SA-3s are over here. Wait, the SA-3 is a target too. Okay. Hmm. Okay, so yeah, Sam probably has its own radar. This doesn't say the SA-3 is a target. What was the mission of overview again? Uh, 
destroy, I say four, fives, and, tw and twenties. So yeah, the three's not an objective. All right, so where's our aircraft at this point? They're still heading south, 480 knots. Let's go ahead and speed things up a bit. Okay, so our aircraft are making their way south. We're going to try and stay outside the enemy targeting radius here, which I believe is represented by this dotted line. There's a whole bunch of different um, sort of interfaces or overlays that you can you can leverage. All right, so let's do this. Let's go ahead and attack manually. We're going to attack this SA-5. We have two weapons we can allocate to it. We'll allocate one. I think they'll fire it right away. I will. So immediately that weapon is away. I'm also going to go ahead and do a manual target on the SA-5 over here. We'll assign one to that. All right, so both of those cruise missiles are away. And does our group still have any weapons left? It still says we have two. Oh, I've got the other backfire. I should have fired two, so we're gonna go ahead and allocate one for that. And we'll go ahead and allow it. one for the target over here. So we're allotting two missiles per target. And so you can see these missiles are away. Select on it here, we can see they're very fast, 2,900 knots. We'll go ahead and view the 3D layer and we'll kind of follow these guys in. You want to hunt uh, North Korean missile batteries again in CMANO, Pat? Well, you can. You can also do it in CMO tomorrow. All right, so aircraft are going to RTB. They're out of weapons, so they're going to RTB back to base. Thanks, North. So the SA-5 has three radars. Well, it mentioned all the different radars in the write-up, but what I wasn't sure is if the actual missile site itself has the radar or if the actual radars... So, like... There are radars here, right? There's a Tall King here. There's a back net here. Does destroying these in any way reduce the effectiveness of the SA-5? Or do they have their own inbuilt radar that's part of the actual missile that we're shooting at? That's what I'm not super clear on. All right, so we'll speed things up a little bit here. You've got four missiles inbound. The enemy can shoot your missiles down too. That's the other thing to keep in mind is there's definitely a missile defense element in this. Point defense is a big thing in this game. So their S2, you know, their S300s could definitely shoot down our incoming missiles if they chose or if they pick it up on target. Go ahead and zoom in on these. Uh, well, that's the aircraft. All right, so I'm not sure which. Are, both of these missiles look like they're going to be on target roughly the same time. These guys are flying over the mountains. So these guys are coming right over the top of a radar installation. Both of them will be. So there was an explosion, but I don't think, I don't know if we destroyed the target. So it doesn't look like we destroyed the target over there on the left or on the right for that matter. So we fired four missiles. Gargoyle vanished a few minutes ago. So the enemy does have fighter aircraft up by the way. All of these missiles missed. Damn it, missed by 30 feet. Missed by 31 feet. Missed by 79 feet. Fuck. Oh, nice. Those are cool little pop-ups there to give us a little bit of info about the miss. 
<sighs> Kushin, I still don't believe you if, uh... If there isn't nuclear weapons in this game, then then Belugan has no... Or if there aren't nuclear quick battles, then... then I'm sorry, but I don't believe that uh, Tortuga ha or Belugan had any part. All right, so we have eight SSN-30 calibers. We're going to go ahead and fire two from this surface action group. The only thing I wish is, like, they fire pretty damn quick on the target the second you uh, you order it. It's like I would like to watch the surface action group actually fire their missiles. There's the uh, two SS whatevers. All right, let's slow things down to times one speed. Let's go ahead and issue an order for a manual attack. These fulcrums are just flying around. Where are they flying top cover on this same site? No, that's the airfield. Where's the same site? Come on now. Okay, so we're gonna allocate two cruise missiles to that. And there you can see the missiles go. So one of them's away, and there goes the other. SSN 30 caliber surface to surface or anti 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 land cruise missiles coming off the Gerpard mod PR 1166.1 RFS Dagestan. All right, so we'll close the uh, the interface for now. You know, all these missiles are uh, in route. You can see their SS 30N calibers you can see if we pull up the database you got a nice little picture of that gigantic cruise missile the big ass rocket on the back um its weight is 2000 kilograms it has a 400 kilogram sap warhead it is a initial well i guess it's an ins with gps navigation level cruise flight so it doesn't do like pop up or anything like that yeah so Hey, Belugan, how you doing there? Is it like our Tomahawk? The SSN-30? Um, yeah, so we'll see. All right, so we've got missiles inbound here on this SN SA-5 Gammon site, and we've got these other missiles. Where are these guys going? What did you shoot? Oh, that's cool. You can see the missile path. I didn't. I is that new? I've never noticed where you can actually see the path of the cruise missile. Can I adjust this? I don't know if I want to click anything, but is this a missile that you can actually adjust its target mid-flight? Because that would be pretty cool if you could. It's not new pixel. Well, it's new since the last time I played. It's been a while since I played. I know you can adjust the course for some missiles um, in command, but I didn't know if the actual the pathing in that way was new, but I guess not. Okay, fine. It was there before. It still looks cool to me. It's new to me. Okay, put it that way. Let's go ahead and speed things up. This missile's too slow. Only moves at 500 knots. All right, so he's coming in to his target. We're going to go ahead and we're going to slow things down. We're going to go ahead and jump into 3D mode, and we're going to do a full screen this time. So this guy... Ah. Processor doesn't like me. These guys are going to get here fa faster. That's not what I have selected. That is still not what I have selected. All right, so we've got the two cruise missiles. These guys are coming in. Well, I'm gonna get motion sickness just looking down at an ocean. All right, so it's pretty close to the uh, to the surface here. Let's uh, speed things up just a little bit. God, it's so nice to just be able to click and drag. I wonder if there's any way for TAC view to fix the uh, God's Eye view. 
Because that's the one thing that I feel like they could definitely... Would definitely benefit us from some sense of fog of war. But I think most people use... Oh no, they shot it down! Don't shoot it down. Don't shoot it down. Don't see it. You can't see it. It's not here. Nothing to worry about. Don't shoot me. He's gonna make it in. Well, something exploded. I think he missed his target, though. Why are my Russian cruise missiles so bad? Uh, weapon hit. It malfunctioned! God damn! Wait, no, that was a while ago. No, he just missed. Okay. So an SA-20 shot down the first one, and the second one missed. No, the second SA-20 missed. I'm sorry. So they shot two SA-20s, one hit, one missed. And where's the actual... So this S-30 did hit the SA-5 target. So it did hit it. Okay. Did it not destroy it? Because we still have it on the map. Alright, so these are through. Okay. These things are just slow. Is the enemy gonna move in and attack our surface? Or are they just flying to where our cruise missiles are? I don't think there's any way they'd fly out here and engage us. You mean you're gonna tell me that I'm not gonna just be able to stand off from 100 miles away and hit them with cruise missiles till they die? I can't pull an America? Watch the message log on this one. So both these guys are still inbound toward this SA-5. No marking that they've been hit. No indication that there's any problems. I don't know if there's maybe not an SA-20 in there to shoot them down or not. You can see they're coming in at 530 knots at about 330 feet off the ground. Okay, so two explosions here. So there's a hundred percent armor penetration. All right, so we got some hits, but the enemy's still here. Hmm. <sighs> well. Tank options. I can switch it to auto, so they'll just keep keep you know continue to engage. But I kind of feel like continuing to attack. That's not the target. Oh yeah, it is. There go our S three hundreds or SN thirties. So we'll go ahead and blast through time here. We've got three days. That's the other thing with this is it's kind of like, all right, you've got a little bit of time. You don't have to rush through this scenario. Oh, they shot those down. So they shot the ones down on the right flank. On the left flank, they did get there. So they shot down two more SN30s with the SA-20. How many SA-20s do they have? Is there any chance we can just have them burn through all their ammo? Uh, meanwhile, these guys hit single rail. I'm not destroying anything. That's the problem. Is I don't even think I destroyed this battery up here. 
No, it's still he's still there. And I think I burned through all my uh, everything I have range on anyway. I could close in and do a surface bombardment. That would be interesting. I wonder if they have air to surface uh, weapons. Right, what do our aircraft look like at this airbase here at uh, Ulatosh Airfield? So we've got six aircraft here. These are all the, the, the... Okay, so that's SAR. What about up here? Aircraft, we've got 30 there. These guys are mostly air-to-air -air loadouts. They're um, Su-27s in air-to-air -air loadout mode. We've got some uh, Su-34s, which have AS-17. What, what's the range of this weapon? Is that a standoff? 100 nautical miles. Okay. So we're going to launch these two as a group. We're going to launch these two as a group. Su-24 Fencer down here. These are aerial bombs. We also have AS-4 low lows, whatever those are. And we have e ECM, so Electronic Countermeasure Su-24s. So we'll launch each one of these individually. Now there is a mission editor where you can like actually set up air-to-air -air missions so you can kind of organize strikes a little bit better. I'm not very good at that. So I actually prefer to just kind of manage things individually, um, which is probably not super smart. Not efficient, that's for sure. All right, so flight 406 is our fullback. Actually, no. All right, so let's do this. These two flights, these are these are our fighters. So these are over here. These are our bombers. We go ahead and auto attack. These guys are gonna show so the fuck shot down. But they're gonna go after the uh, SA fives over here on the left flank. This flight is going to escort the other guys. I'm not actually sure if there is a option to escort. I don't think there is. So we're just going to plot these guys course down this way. Meanwhile, we do have the electronic countermeasure group. I wonder if we tell these guys to attack. Like, if we tell an ECM group to attack a target, will they jam it? Also, by the way, this is the new thing over here is the G, G tolerance. So that represents like when a, when an aircraft is actually doing heavy maneuvering. What's that, uh, you know, what's the human's ability to withstand that? Okay. Right, so he's gonna fly down this way. Sensors. Offensive ECM. Just quick selection. We're also gonna do sensors on this one. Offensive ECM. So maybe they can jam, I don't know. That's the hope. Why is he going around in circles? Oh, because he reached the end of his target, didn't he? Yeah, slow down! My fighters are just loitering. Your strike package is going in hot, unescorted. Don't worry guys, you got this. Yeah, we'll look attack you in a minute. At the moment, there's nothing to look at. Oh boy. 
not not coordinating, not doing anything that I should be doing, making myself a fool. That's what's about to happen here. Keep it up, boys. Charge! By the way, this red is a no-fly zone just for this little red section on the map. All right, so these guys are going in. You can see they're starting to pick up radar here. These little indicators here. I'm leaving it up to the AI. I gave him a, uh, an order. Auto attack. Figured the AI would figure it out. They're coming in. It's 36,000 feet. They're not really coming in low. They're getting painted, I think. We've got these red indicators here represent hostile radars. Your internet can't handle streaming, Belugan? You literally are a developer on a war game and you don't have quality internet. Eek. Get in the 2010s. We're almost in the 2020s, man! Satellite internet belugan. Oh boy. So let's take a look here. Let's, let's check out our aircraft here in TACVIEW 3D. And let's see. You heard that. Uh, why doesn't it do... Why do I have to... It's like it remembers the first thing I clicked in Tack View. Su-34s. I don't see any... Oh, there's some fulcrums over this way. I said zoom in out. I didn't tell it to do that. So remember, this is completely no fog of war. So these enemy fulcrums look like they're moving to engage. My Su-34s do have air-to-air -air weapons, don't they? Engage. Turn and engage. You've been given an order. Air to air targets. Hit them. I don't know what the range is on my Alamos. Could probably look at that, right? Map settings. Air weapons. So it looks like they should be in range. Maybe they don't have a fire control solution yet? Ah! Oh, cool. What's this? I don't even know. Status engaged offensive. That's cool. So if you hold select over a unit, it gives you that info. Or control, sorry. Doesn't give me any info. Oh, it does. Attack the fuckers. Shoot your damn weapons. Well, guys, we're about to get a dogfight by the looks of it. My aircraft slung with big AS-17 Kryptons may not be the best dogfighters right now. Enemies fired an A-10 Alamo at us. Did I pause the game? Weapon incoming! Break! Break! I must be clicking a button that pauses it. Oh no, there goes the first one, it just blew up! Oh, it's an event that's triggering. 
Taking heavy fire. Eject, eject. Sorry, buddy. New contact. Designate missile. Hit. Penetration. 100%. Hey, Belugan, is there a way that I can still load in, like, any weapon system I want in a given scenario? Like, if I just want to nuke the hell out of Azerbaijan, can I load Russian nukes? I know there used to be a way to do it, but I can't remember how. In editor mode? Can I load that up when I'm in the middle of a scenario? Let's do this, guys, because I suck at this game. We're going to go back to the menu. Edit scenario, I'm assuming. Iron hand save, load. You might... <laughs> Okay, so we're now in the scenario editor, which is the same, you know, we're picking up the scenario, the exact same spot we just were in. Except we're going to make things interesting because I'm bad at this game. Um, and I admittedly don't know a ton about what I'm doing, but I do know nuclear weapons. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh boy! Look at that! Look at how pretty that is! Look at all those ICBMs! Delicious! 30 SS-19 stilettos, 60 SS-27 sickles, hells to the yes. All right, we are going to, we're going to just, we're going to have a little bit of fun, okay? Tech view, give us this war, give us the nukes. I probably should have looked at the tech view before I unpaused. Oh, I should stop the auto-pausing, right? Look at all the missiles. They're all going up. All the missiles across the sky. Woo! <laughs> I'm not a madman. Not at all. It's like that, um, that scene in, uh, is it Day After Tomorrow or Day After? When, uh, when you see just like a bunch of missiles streaking through the sky. Woo! SS-19s and SS-27s. What a beautiful sight. What a beautiful sight. This should only take a few minutes. 550 kiloton weapons on pretty much all of these guys. At least on this. Even the stiletto. Actually, the stiletto has a Merv. It has six Merv. Wow! Six 750 kiloton weapons. I wonder if they're independently targeted by the AI. Honestly, this kind of, this kind of a thing is so cool when you just watch the game kind of blow itself up. <laughs> but hey, my CP my CPU is hanging in there. So if we zoom in here, we can see the uh, the array of weapons and their targets. I'm assuming I can't adjust these targets though while we're. in flight here lieutenant sem oh man guys i feel bad for lieutenant smirnov first off lieutenant smirnov that is an awesome name second off <laughs> lieutenant smirnov <laughs> rip dude at least you got a front row seat man the u.s would be so confused if this happened they'd be like why are there 60 russian nukes sailing toward azerbaijan what the hell all right, let's slow things up a bit now. You can see all the missiles are turning over now. They're all headed in. God, the uh, the sky is crowded with, with tracks. I'm curious.
curious to see what attack view nuke strike looks like. All right, this guy's going for the edge. Who's going to get there first? It's a race. Are we even going to hit the... Uh, are there is there civilian casualties penalty in this game? I'm guessing not in this scenario because we're playing as Russia. Do you think the SS or S twenties, SA twenties are gonna sh or SA? No, they wouldn't be able to. The SA three hundred shoot any of these down? They probably can't manage it. Hey, Demetrius, we're just nuking Azerbaijan. No big deal. The people of Azerbaijan admittedly probably don't... Oh, did we just get a detonation here over here? I think we got one nuke. We've got a couple of nukes. A couple of detonations. The only thing I wish is Takyu needs to add a mushroom cloud. I want mushroom clouds! My computer is slowing down. It's not happy. <laughs> what are you doing?! curious if I'm dropping any frames so we're wiping the map I think of enemy targets <laughs> Azerbaijan will retaliate with what uh oh What's... Azerbaijan air defense radio abruptly ceased mid transition well that seems about right similar alert disruption noted to data traffic Assesses that Azerbaijan air defense uh, control communications are currently inoperable. Anticipate reduced coordination of Azerbaijan air defense activities until the communications reestablish. That's probably like the headline that CNN picks up. They're like, they've abruptly stopped transmitting. What could this mean? <laughs> you can see the uh, the white little clouds here of nuclear devastation. Somehow the, S the this random one survived. Whoops. What do these little lightning bolts mean? Five million people? Do five million people live in Azerbaijan? Oh, EMP, okay. Boom! Somehow, there's still a few left. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this episode, this first look at Command Modern Operations. Uh, this is a game that's a lot of fun, but I'm also really bad at, but it's just kind of fun to tinker around in for me. If you're really looking for better gameplay, I will not shy away from recommending others to look at. Uh, I highly recommend you check out Kushin from Kushin's Gaming. Uh, he's got some of the, the better videos on YouTube. Uh, I would also recommend when they, when they start posting it. I haven't seen anything from them yet. But Stoic Frog for Stoic Frog Gaming uh, is, a, is a good command uh, player to follow. Tortuga Power, also another good command player to follow. I, you know, it's one of these games that I haven't learned well enough to show it off in a, in a good way. But I also just have fun with it. And so that's what we're doing here today. We're just having a little bit of fun. Uh, just kind of showing you some of the capabilities. After this, I actually loaded up all the American ICBM fields and I launched and I loaded up all the Russian ICBM fields and I did a nuke to nuke strike between the two countries because you can do that if you have a CPU that's powerful enough I did not and it caused it to freeze up uh, but that was that was on my systems end because there were literally like 10,000 nukes streaking across the sky um, but with that being said, that's going to do it for tonight's, uh, or today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, this is a first look at Command Modern Operations by Warfare Sims. Uh, again, uh, for better gameplay than myself, check out Tortuga Power. Check out, uh, uh, maybe eventually XTRG. I don't know if he'll cover this or not, but check out Tortuga Power. Uh, check out Stoic Frog. Check out Jive Turkey. He does some stuff on this. And then also um, some stuff by Kushin from Kushin's Gaming. Highly recommend all those guys. Thanks for sticking us with us for an hour. I hope it wasn't too much of a bore or a slog. I hope this game at least showed you enough to intrigue you to take a look. Because uh, this is a hard, this is as hardcore a simulation as they come. And I had a lot of fun with it. But with that being said, guys, that's enough of that. That's enough of me rambling. I will give you back whatever is left of your day. And uh, until next time, this is The Historical Gamer, as always, saying thank you very much for continuing to support the channel. Thank you much for tuning in. Make sure to leave your comments below. Uh, but as always, I am out. 
Bye-bye.